Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I am Rex. This Gary is Blackwell. A gift. I beat you. Well, okay, so it's not Gary Blackwell. It's actually David Ronan. Well, that's a lion slander. That's because the packaging had Blackwell on it, and there was no name anywhere on the bottle and no note, but I got an email finally from a guy who said, I'm the one that donated so that. So what's the name on the thing now? So his name is David Ronan. Don't think so, says Gary Blackwell. Yeah. <laughs> David Ronan, you magnificent bastard. All right. I think Blackwell is like the shipping company. Is this the in. Israeli yes, distillery? Yes, it is in Tel Aviv. Yeah. And uh, this one is a pomegranate finished whiskey. Are there, how do you do that? Is there pomegranate barrels? Yeah, yeah pomegranate wine is a thing. Oh. Fortified. It's a fortified okay. wine, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, you take pomegranates, you ferment them, you add... You fortify them. Did you see the, <laughs> it's 60% it, on that. Oh yeah. It's high. Wow. So wow. they, uh, these are b bourbon casks and then finished for at least six months in pomegranate barrels. Okay. Have you ever had a pomegranate? Oh yeah. I've not. No, oh, really? Not that I can remember. Right, right, right. I, I sat there thinking about it because they're such a pain in the ass. When you get them like, right. fresh, you got like cut them just right and pull them apart and not damage the seeds. So what we saw one of these videos, I think they're a uh, Middle Eastern country on yeah. uh, YouTube. My wife saw it and basically how they take the pomegranates out very right. quickly. Right. So we went on a six month pomegranate kit. Oh geez, so you yeah. have a, like a real memory yeah. of pomegranate. No, like every time, every time we, uh, you know, uh, sit down to watch something, she'd have this bowl of pomegranate. Yeah, with a spoon, yeah. That's they're they're good, I like them. So evidently pomegranate wine is a pain in the butt because you have to crush the seeds. Yeah to get the, what you need, mm -hmm. right? But if you crush them too aggressively, all the bitterness comes out, like over squeezing a tea bag. I, and so you gotta be really careful with pomegranate wine. Yeah. And then using that for a finish, that seems pretty cool. I get the bourbon Ooh. notes. I'm getting yeah. bourbon notes for sure. I'm looking for the other M&H that we have, which yeah. actually it would be right here. As a matter of fact, this is striking me more as a bourbon nose than a single malt nose. I'd like to compare it, because you can start to get these now. I'd like to compare it to their classic, the non-pomegranate. Sure, and this is a 46%, by the way. 46%, yeah. 60%. Uh, the color is obviously a big difference, too, between the... Uh, so, I really am getting mostly just a bourbon cast Yes, malt. yes. I would have put money on this being a bourbon, like a spicy oh. wood, uh, creamy vanilla. At the same time, that's not entirely true because it's actually reminding me of something like Balvenie where there is a lot of bourbon cask, but there's also sherry cask and they mix them. So underneath the very obviously bourbon nose notes, there is a fruitiness underneath it, mm -hmm. which I could see being a single malt kind of fruitiness. Can not you a recognize pomegranate? I'm on the nose, man. Yeah, mostly the bourbon influence for sure of that barrel. Joe, pomegranate has a pretty serious history. Mm -hmm. Like there are some speculation that in the the apple in the Garden of Eden myth mythology, mm -hmm. it's a pomegranate, mm. and it's in Greek mythology. So too. that's even <laughs> so. I would even had to like put forth efforts to. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't like oh, like, would you like a bite mouth. of this? Sure, I'll come back. No, it was just thirty pain, minutes. Painstaking. Hang on, <laughs> hang on, hang on. They were committed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to. Oh. I like that. It's actually more like a sherry cask than I thought it would be. It's like a, it's like a <clears throat> syrupy blackberry for me. Yeah, and like a sul slightly sulfur edgy funky mm. note like a sherry cask would have. Mm. I wonder what they're using See, to fortify the pomegranate. I'm not getting the sulfury note. I am getting like a fruity blackberry. It's less less bourbon on the taste. Yeah, yeah, no, it's deep fruit on the taste. Mm -hmm. uh, and let me put it this way. The front leading experience mm. is that proof. I feel that in the mouth and all the way down. You feel that heat, but the flavors are way up there. But yeah, the first thing I noticed was, damn, that is 120 proof. I'm going from memory, and this is by far the best m and I've ever tasted. I, I agree. because uh, I mean, this is just outright really good to yeah, me. And it, very scotch. Like, this is the equivalent of like a good 10, 12-year-old scotch. Uh, I, I would like say what I prefer. I would say the flavors are getting there, yes, yep. but the amount of uh, edginess on that alcohol layer. I like it. That uh, I think it's going to be a lot for most people because it's not 
a thick, dense, rich presentation of, you know, a high proof. It has got some elbows that are thrown in there. Mm -hmm. There's flavors, but there's a little bit of sharpness. A okay. little bit of sharpness you got to be braced for. But it's, you know, it's 120 proof. You're going to have heat. I like that more than I remember. Maybe I'm just in the mood for this today because I'm getting a similar thing. This is all the bourbon honey, you know? You know what? Weirdly. I'm going to add a little water. Yeah, I want to see what the proof does to that. Weirdly, there's like a dry quality to the 120 proof. You don't mind dry whiskeys at all. You, I really don't. Sometimes you get like super dry. Yep. Yeah, more. you're more into the dry scene than me. I like it, I like it a little sloppy. Boop. Give me some boop. Boop. All right. I'm going to go back to this one while it boops. Mm, this nose is all of those rich, dark fruits. You know, this is still a no for me. And then bourbon. Yeah, it's a little more musty. Like the grain is a little more forward. The Mu malt. Musty, threatening to be vegetal. Yeah. The malt is stronger. Yeah. But it's buried in the pomegranate wine. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm. It got a little more peppery, and then the sweetness got simpler. The sweetness turned into a syrup sweetness instead of a berry sweetness. Yeah. And then there's a little more pepper on the edges of this thing. Hmm. I gotta say I like it better without water. Here's the thing. I like... I'm gonna go a little further. I like this, this pomegranate thing mm -hmm. better than this one. Oh, yeah. But the... The flavors that are there, they're fine. They're, my, they're not my most favorite flavors. There's like a syrupy blackberry at first approach. Um, but there doesn't seem to be a tremendous number of layers. It seems pretty simple. You like the presentation of like a dry whiskey. Mm -hmm. You got that fruit from like the single malt scotch oh, really side of things. Yeah. What did you put water in? I uh, put more water in, even after that. Oh, okay. And it yeah. just got really sugary sweet with no character to it. Bleh. Oh, but. I did this tasting over the weekend, hmm. and in there's, between, there's a there's a bitter quality somewhere in there mm -hmm. that I just can't. That's what I like. It's about holding it. me back. That's why I'm saying that funk, the almost sulfuric like sherry type note. Yeah, I like it. This is <laughs> you are the skinny end of the branch when it comes to notes. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so I did a tasting over the weekend, and there's a it was 25 people in the tower. Do you want to say what it was? Tables. Nah. Okay. It's cool. Um, it was cool. It was very cool. It was very cool. Yeah. Um, but the group in front, I, I was I, like in I for, between. I forgot it was happening, so I didn't. Yeah. I didn't come. <laughs> but I heard it was very cool. It was very cool. Yeah. Uh, in between things when I wouldn't finish my whiskey, yeah. I would just dump it on the carpet right next to me at the front. Yeah. And every time, multiple people in the room were like, <laughs> why did you just dump it on the carpet? Right. And then there was uh, three women in front who were like, about the third one, they're like, whispering yeah. and I said okay do you guys need anything and they're like can we dump ours on the carpet <laughs> and they're like you don't like it they had dump glasses in front of them right but they want to go yeah and I was like sure and they all looked at each other and they were like Ooh. they threw it on the carpet and then they're like ah oh, I can't believe I did that <laughs> it was just like very freeing isn't it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, let's do a little red sonata had a girl I'm dating over for drinks and have collected a bunch of the bourbons and whiskeys mm. y'all have suggested over the last two years and she was thoroughly impressed ah that's a good sign thanks y'all ah yeah it sounds like a keeper based on nothing other than yeah two sentences well what you comment. don't want is for someone to come around they're like this is going pretty well and then they walk in they see your like 100 bottle collection of whiskey and they're yeah worried yeah <laughs> or they see your 100 bottle whiskey collection and go i am an alcoholic mm -hmm. like, oh that's awkward mm -hmm. yeah, yeah uh i'm i would love to see what he has the like, things that we wreck well yeah the thing that we enjoyed that he took that as I should try it. Tacit yeah. approval for him it's to try it. It's like 40 bottles of monkey shoulder. <laughs> Just lined up in a row. Uh, Tim Edmonds, three days a week. Daniel has a new shirt and Rex isn't looking so moochy and only semi-homeless. I am concerned. Yeah, things are changing. Rex is getting more respectable. Daniel's changing shirts. Look, <laughs> I, even when I look respectable, I have mooched all of that. Cats and dogs. Yeah. It's chaos. I could mooch your sister's dog. But I don't, Too late. Want, I don't want another it's dog. It's already gone. They got it? Okay, oh, yeah. they got rid of it. Yep. Because your sister is very good friends with my wife, and yeah. there's like, there a dog situation. I was like, I don't want another dog. And then they found a dude who wants to use it for a herd dog. Oh, so it's going to be an amazing herd dog. life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. are you kidding me? The dog, we have the Border Collie. Yeah. We have the same breed. That's why she was trying to get us to watch it for a couple of weeks. Watch it. 
Yeah, but the, our dog will herd the children. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's in, it really is instinct. Yeah, no, it's instinct. And uh, we'll, we'll chase my oldest, who's taller than you, yeah. almost as tall as me. Yep. Like, he has a voice that sounds like mine. Grown ass man, practically. 15, yeah. 15 years old. But he'll just get ran around the house with the dog trying to <laughs> chase him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I keep wanting to like this more than I do, but this was at least better then. Yeah. I, I'm a fan. But, but you're in it. You're, you're in it. I'm you're a fan. fan. Okay, here's the fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us.